Hi, good morning everybody. It's Wednesday and I hope you're ready to learn something. I'm excited to be here and I hope you are too. Um, today we're going to start with our Word Nerd paper. So I hope that you did your Word Nerd yesterday. So let me flip this around. Let's look at our screen here. And we have our word yesterday which was privilege and you should have filled out your paper. And so your paper on privilege, privilege the way it was used in the story yesterday was a noun and it's a special right or advantage or <coughs> immunity granted to a particular person or group. So I use the sentence, Caroline had the wonderful privilege of meeting Dwight Thorpe and becoming best friends with him. So it's kind of like an honor, which was my synonym. So it's a, she was super happy that she got to meet Dwight and she felt that it was a privilege. So that's how it was used in the story. And my antonym was exclusion. So instead of liking Dwight and thinking it was an honor, she would exclude him from being around her, which is what she did not do because she really likes Dwight. Okay, next word, number two, was impairment. Impairment is a noun, and it is the condition of being unable to perform as a consequence of physical or mental unfitness. And it can... Um, also mean the state or fact of being impaired, especially in a specified faculty. And this particular picture means that you are hearing impaired, which is what Caroline was from our story. And my sentence that I used because of that, I put Caroline had a hearing impairment, but was not completely deaf. Because she said in that story that she was actually not deaf and she was a ninja at reading lips. And so it really was, an was not an impairment for her. She actually had, did have hearing loss, but she could do anything she wanted to do, which was why I like that chapter so much. Just because you have a difficulty or um, a disability doesn't mean that you're not as talented as anyone else and can do anything you put your mind to. Okay, so a synonym for that would maybe be damage, and an antonym could be improvement. So by the end of the chapter, she had improved her situation by convincing the people at her new school that she had surgery and could hear perfectly fine so they'd stop screaming at her. <laughs> All right, so let's look at our next part on our screen here. There's our figurative language. Yesterday, we talked about simile and metaphor. Today, we're gonna talk about alliteration, but first we're gonna go over our similes and our metaphors. So let's turn to our next slide. A simile is a figure of speech involving the comparison of one thing with another thing of a different kind. In the metaphor, we use the similes of brave as a line and red like a rose. And you use the words like or as. That's the most important part that makes a simile different than a metaphor. Because a metaphor you compare two things also, but you do not use the words like or as. So let's look. You should have had your paper that you filled out and I did pictures on mine. So I'm gonna go over them on the screen with you here and then I'll show you the pictures. Okay, so I put, the nurse was as brave as a lion. My M&M is red like a rose and Harvey is mean like the Grinch. So there's as, like, like. That's how I know it's a simile, all right? And then my metaphors, which do not use like or as, Harvey's temper was a stick of dynamite. Laughter is a blanket of warmth. My bedroom is a black hole, <laughs> okay? So when we think about those things, notice that the metaphors, I didn't use any words of like or as. So I'm gonna show you some of my pictures and unfortunately I couldn't draw one picture, one illustration because I used a permanent marker and it bled through my paper. We do that all the time, don't we, at school? All right, so here, the nurse was as brave as a lion, and I made a nurse, and I made her hair look like she had a lion mane, because I think the nurses right now are super brave, and um, they, and so are the doctors, anybody in the medical field, so that's why I picked a nurse. And then my next one was, see my M&M there? See it? The M&M is red like a rose, and I made my M&M the middle part of the rose, and it's red. And then the bottom one says, Harvey is mean like the Grinch, and I made Harvey look like the Grinch. <laughs> 
with his evil glare because he is mean like the Grinch. Okay, those were my similes, and I said like or as which each with each one of them. And now my metaphors, Harvey's temper was a stick of dynamite. Look at my little picture of Harvey here. I made his head exploding with a stick of dynamite on it, and he's got Darth paper on his finger, and he's yelling at everybody. I couldn't do the laughter one, because look, it has an M&M through it. <laughs> And then my bedroom is a giant black hole. And I've got my bed in the middle and clothes everywhere because my bedroom is messy. I have to clean it up. I cleaned how part of it up yesterday. So your illustrations can match your picture and it can make it kind of fun when you do that. So just wanted to show you all those things. My favorite is definitely probably his head exploding. I like that one. Harvey's temper was a stick of dynamite because his temper is so explosive and he gets angry. And then um, the nurse is as brave as a lion. So she, that's that, those are my two favorites. Okay, so that was our skill for yesterday out of figurative language. Now let's look at our words. So you need to get your, let me flip this around. You need to get your paper back out. This is gonna be our new word today, ball. And it's not ball, it's ball different kind of ball. And there is my picture for that. Okay, so you can write that down and listen for it in the story today, how it is used. And our skill for today, a different figurative language is alliteration. We did this with our elf story at school and it's the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words. Now we did this at the very, um, at Christmas time, we made elves and then we used alliteration to write a little paragraph about our elf using alliteration, which means you take a letter and you start most of the words in the sentence or in the paragraph or even the story um, using that letter. Now you don't have to have every single word, but you can have several of them and that makes it alliteration as they go in order. So I'm going to show you one on the screen down here of an example. A lot of tongue to twisters, blah, 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 see tongue twisters are alliteration. So let me show you what that looks like. Okay. So here is our pickles. If you love pickles, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where are the pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? <laughs> and that's fun and it's a tongue twister. And if you'll notice, this is P, letter P. So it starts with a lot of P's throughout the stories. Notice this is not a P, that is not a P, that's not a P, this is not a P, but lots of them are P for the story. Okay, so. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with that, which is today is laundry day. Not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> I like to wash the laundry and dry the laundry. I don't like to put it away, but I will, but I don't like to. Okay, so here we go. It's laundry day. So I want you to write a half page paragraph using alliteration about something in the laundry room. And I picked this nice messy picture of a laundry room. Kind of looks like mine sometimes. Look at all those things that are in the laundry room that you could pick from. Okay, so you're going to get you a piece of paper. Doesn't matter what kind. I wrote mine on white paper. It doesn't have to have lines. If you have lines, great. And you're gonna write a half page. It doesn't have to be quite half a page, but close. Um, I want you to write a paragraph about something in your laundry room and I want you to write it using alliteration, which means most of the story needs to pit start with the letter of the item that you choose. So I chose socks. So I'm gonna read my little um, paragraph that I wrote about socks because I'm gonna give you an example. My super silly socks somehow secretly vanished somewhere on Saturdays. I searched silently too shy to share the secret. Someday, I will scream and shout and it will slide out saying, supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, my sneaky silly socks were soaking slyly, not seen in the seam of the dryer. Showing my super sappy smile, I slowly snap the solo socks together as soul sisters. 
So if you'll notice, I used S, obviously, because I chose a sock, and I wrote a lot of words using socks. And it is okay to get your dictionary off your phone, or if you have a dictionary at home, or ask your parents words that start with that letter. That's what I did. I just got me a little list going of some words out of my head, but if you don't know any out of your head, you can obviously use your dictionary. And then you just write your paragraph. Okay, so next we're going to be reading our next chapter in our book. So let me put you up here. I hope you don't fall down today. I may have to just hold you because my stand is acting crazy. Maybe I'll put it up here. Hold on, this is gonna be a real bumpy ride. It's a bumpy ride. Oh, but there you are. Okay, so when we finished yesterday, Caroline had gone on a date with Dwight to Wendy's and um, she had asked him what he needed, she needed to do to get these kids to stop treating her like she was different because she isn't different. She did, does have a problem hearing, but she wanted to be just treated like a normal person like they treated her at Macquarie Middle School because she's going to a new school called Tippett Academy. And um, anyway, Dwight told her she needed to put some Band-Aids on her head and say she had surgery and that it would stop and it did and she found out she actually had some real friends there and then the other people that weren't her real friends, they quit talking to her. Okay, so this chapter is called Origami Yoda and Nothing by Quabando. Now, if you don't remember who Quabando is, Quabando is the Cheeto hog from Origami Yoda. So, we're going to read that. He's got a letter in here for the school board. Dear school board, my story about Origami Yoda starts with Mr. Good, Clean, Fun and his monkey. I think it's funny that when a kid has a puppet, you want to send him to Kref. But when an adult has a puppet, you keep hiring him to come give us presentations about washing our hands and stuff. Actually, this time, Mr. Good Clean Fun wasn't there to talk about good hygiene as usual. He came to get us all excited about the school fundraiser. And here's the advertisement. Soapy the monkey and good clean fun. I wonder what kind of stuff they're going to have us sell this year. I whispered to Cassie, and we went into the gym for the assembly. Unfortunately, Mr. Hal overheard me. He was my teacher last year, and he always hated me. Well, you're not going to sell anything with that attitude, he said. Please step over here, young man. And he starts to bawl me out right there. Somehow, it's extra embarrassing to get in trouble with last year's teacher. Do you even know why our school has fundraisers? The money goes to fund the elective classes, since the state cut funding for non-essential education. Do you understand that? I said yes, but I guess he could tell I had no idea what he was talking about. What elective are you in? Uh, I don't know. I said, Democrat? No, I'm talking about your elective class, like band or art. Oh, I am taking Mr. Randall's Lego robots class. Mr. Howell rolled his terrible yellow eyes. Well, it's going to be pretty hard for you to build a Lego robot without any Legos. That's what you kids don't understand. You see, the money for those classes has to come from somewhere. And thankfully, Mr. Good, Clean, Fun, and Soapy the Monkey came out on stage and Mr. Howell let me sit down. They showed us these mini cans of popcorn we were supposed to sell. Each mini can was a collector's tin, he told us. One had pictures of a cottage in a snowstorm painted by somebody famous. Or we could sell a can with any team's football helmet on it. Or motorcycles, kittens, or Native Americans. And the popcorn came in different flavors. They passed out these Edufan popcorn products and these catalogs, and they all had different cans in them. I was like, what? 10 bucks a can? How are we supposed to sell popcorn in an ugly can for $10? And I knew there was no way in the world I was going to sell any regular size cans, which were $23. Then we heard all about the pizza parties, the top classes would win, and Mr. Good Clean Fun showed us a big jar of dollar coins and said the person who sold the most cans could scoop out a whole handful. Gee, maybe they'd get a whole $10 and could buy themselves another can of popcorn. I noticed that Mr. Good Clean Fun didn't actually open any of the cans of popcorn, and he let us taste it, probably because he knew we would have puked. So when I got to Lego Robots class, I asked Mr. Randall if he was really telling the truth, and then we needed to sell popcorn to pay for Lego stuff. He had a long explanation about the school's electives, and basically, it was a yes. He looked like he was embarrassed for us to have to go out and sell those dumb cans. 
Remember how I asked you guys if we were going to go to the regional first LEGO League competition? And I said we would have to wait and see? Yeah? Well, this is what we were waiting to see. How much money would be in the fund after the fundraiser? Ugh, I said. So at lunch, I went to see Dwight. He's always moping about around these days because his girlfriend isn't here no more. But Origami Yoda seems as Jedi wise as ever. Origami Yoda, how are we supposed to sell all that popcorn? I asked Dwight, who was pushing a roll around in a pool of gravy with one hand and holding up Origami Yoda in the other. Too late, said Kellen. We already asked. Well, what did Origami Yoda say? Nothing you must sell, said Origami Yoda, Kellen, and Tommy, all at the same time. But I have to sell it, I told Origami Yoda. Apparently, that is the only way we are going to get to, to take our robots to the finals. Yeah, said Kellen. Ms. Richards told us the same thing about art class. We need to sell the junk to pay for art supplies. But how? I asked. Nothing you must sell, repeated Origami Yoda. Yeah, we've heard, Dwight. Now you can it, hollered Harvey from the end of the table. Your dumb advice is even dumber than usual. Don't make me get out Darth paper to get you to shut up. Then Kellen and Tommy started yelling at Harvey, and they were all fighting. They fight all the time these days. But I started thinking, maybe Origami Yoda was right. Actually telling us something useful, I mean, like he always does. So you don't want me to sell anything? Yoda shook his head back and forth. No, nothing you must sell. There's all the little Yodas. Good grief, said Harvey and started to pull Darth Paper out of his bag. I went to see if there was a seat at Murky's table. I just can't stand listening to Harvey anymore. After school, I went back to see Mr. Randall before my bus came. If I sell a $10 mini can of popcorn, how much money actually goes into our fund? Well, not $10, I know that, said Mr. Randall. There's the cost of the popcorn and the can. Eh, and an ugly painting on the can, I added. And they have to pay Mr. Good Clean Fun. And his monkey, said Mr. Randall with a funny smile. Actually, he said, I've heard that the school only keeps half the money, but don't quote me on that. So say I talk to my grandmother into supporting the school by buying an outrageously overpriced mini tin of popcorn she doesn't even want. What does the school get? Like five bucks? I guess so. What if I sold her nothing for five dollars? Nothing? Yeah. It would be cheaper than $10 and it wouldn't clutter up her house and it wouldn't be ugly, but I would get the same amount of money for the school. Mr. Randall smiled. Guavendo, that's not a bad idea. Thanks, but it wasn't mine. It was Origami Yoda's. What really surprised me was how many people bought more than one nothing. My grandmother, for example, bought five nothings. That's $25 worth of nothing. Q, I've got 12 grandkids and you're my favorite. Of course. And each year, one of them calls me up to buy some kind of junk in a collectible can. Who collects junk in cans? But I always buy, even though I know that most of the money is just going to go right back to the idiots that made the ugly can in the first place. So thank you for not making me buy a can. Then she put my granddad on the phone, and he liked my idea so much, he gave me $25 too. That's $50 on one phone call. There's no way they would have bought $50 worth of popcorn. And even if they had, that would have only been $25 for the school. When I told my neighbors and my mom that they could either buy a $10 can or just give the school $5, they all gave me at least $5, and nobody even looked at the ugly popcorn calendar. Plus, they all laughed about it, instead of grumbling like they did last year. Grand total of nothing. And here's a picture of his nothing. 
So my grand total of selling nothing, $135. I would have had to sell $270 worth of popcorn to get that much. I never would have been able to sell all that. Plus, if I had, I would have had to deliver it. And then everybody who actually ate it would be blaming me for getting ripped off. Because it's gross. I told the other kids what I was doing and some of them tried it too. Everybody in Lego class did. And we made a lot of money. I thought we should just keep it and go to the competition. But Mr. Randall said we should put it in the electives fund for everybody. Of course, when Mr. Good Clean Fun came back and handed out prizes for selling ugly tins of popcorn, we did not get anything because we hadn't sold any Edu Fun products. But when we got to Mr. Randall's class later, he had ordered pizzas for us with his own money. <laughs> so we also actually got something for nothing. Harvey's comment. Okay, let's not confuse the issue. Yes, the popcorn cans were stupid. Yes, it was a great idea to sell nothing instead. But was that idea really paper wad Yoda's? I think not. Paper wad Yoda was just babbling. It was Quavendo's idea. That's a classic tactic of fake psychics. Throw out something vague and let the sucker think it, that it meant something. My comment, Tommy. Ugh. I can't stand the way Harvey twists everything around. Harvey is still hung up on whether origami Yoda is a hoax. The important thing now is to show that he is there to benefit the school. In this story, he got a bunch of kids who didn't want to sell anything to sell nothing, and we made a lot more money than we would have. The school board should be giving him a reward, period. He deserves a reward for the next story, too. Okay. So that tells us that there's another story. Quavendo was letting us know that he definitely believed that Origami Yoda had a great idea and he didn't have to sell cruddy popcorn and they still raised money to help their class, which was excellent. Okay, so that was a great chapter. I love that chapter. So um, next time you have a fundraiser, maybe you could be creative like that too and sell nothing for something. <laughs> okay, so let's get our... Um, thing out from yesterday which was our factor crud and yesterday's was a good one and it says the average smartphone user answers or returns an unexpected phone call twice as fast as they respond to a text and the answer to that is dun, 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 crud not true it says on the back that um says that it's crud. The average person does not answer their smartphone unless they are expecting a call. Your mailbox is full. So you actually, uh, most people don't answer their phone unless they're expecting a call. So there you go. If they've missed it, they don't call back. The average, it says. All right, so today's question is, most women still believe that proposing marriage is a man's job. Mm. So do you think that it's still a man's job to ask a lady to marry you if you're a boy? And if you're a girl, do you think it's the man's job to do that? All right. Okay, so our last thing, since it's laundry day. Now remember, we got a couple things to do, so I'm going to review. If you didn't get your illustrations done on your paper, you can work on that. Need to do your new word today, which was ball, B-A-W-L. And then you need to do your writing assignment. I did mine about socks because it's laundry day. You're supposed to pick out a laundry item. Now let me turn this around. So remember, this is your assignment. Now I'm going to get out of here and we're going to watch this funny video. It's pretty funny since it's laundry day about a bear doing some laundry. This was a commercial at one time. putting the feeder hose into the back of the machine. We're getting water directly from the lake over there. Is that a blanket or get something like a warm? Hey guys, guys, it's got company. Let's just move away from something. It's a bear. It's a bear. It's fine. We're fine. Just let me walk over here. We're fine. You too, sir. Now, please.
Let's just give the bear a minute. He's got to move on. Just let the bear be. Go back to work now, Mr. Oh, Granger. The bear's now leaving. Okay, gang. It's, it's clear for us to go back to set. It's a polar bear. You wanted to do this before? 